Hey everybody, hope you're doing well and staying healthy. As it's been said recently, this has definitely been the lentiest Lent ever Lented. And even though we haven't been worshiping communally together, we've still been preparing our hearts for Easter and for eternity. Um, in order to stay engaged during this quarantine, we've decided as a ministry to come together and read the passion of our Lord from the Gospel of John. Um, this great act of love is our hope. And it also reminds us to pick up our own cross, especially during this challenging time. A reading from the Gospel of John. When he had said this, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and the disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with his lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus then said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, Whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malachus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into his scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup? that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caphasus, who was the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who would advise the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. Then the slave girl who kept the door said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the officers were standing there, having made a charcoal fire, for it was cold and they were warming themselves, and Peter was one of them, standing there and warming himself. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I've spoken publicly to the world. I've always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather, and in a secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who have heard what I've said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of those whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was early. They themselves did not enter the praetorium so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? 
your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the Jews, but my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release you one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want me to release the king of Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Pilate then took Jesus and scorched him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and then put a purple robe on him. And they began to come up to him and say, Hail, King of the Jews, and to give him slaps in the face. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize that I have the power to either free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it weren't, were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement in Hebrew Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away. Crucify him, Pilate said to them. Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of Jews, but that this man claimed to be the King of Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his outer garments and made four parts, a part for every soldier, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of the scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and from my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold, your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, 
in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken, and, as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. We pray the season of Lent has brought you deeper into your faith and service to our God, His church, and the world that He has created. And our hope is that you guys have a blessed Easter and that we can be worshiping together soon as a community. Know that you are in our thoughts and our prayers, and please reciprocate that by keeping us in yours. Thanks.